Good evening, I'm Michael Moore and this is TV Nation. Okay. You know, we're in our last episode here of our summer series and we got to thinking, you know, maybe the show could use a, a few hints to, just in case, you know, they call us back in the mid-season. <laughs> And, and, and just to show that we're committed to making this even a better show, we decided to hire an expert to help us uh, improve TV Nation. So we've hired a golf pro, Roger Jabara, here from the Shanty Creek Resort in up, upstate Michigan, up Thank north, right? You. Thank you, Michael. And you're going to give us some hints, some advice throughout the show tonight? I'm going to try to help your golf game out. Okay, and our show. And the show. Your stance looks good and your width looks good. So you're almost perfect. So stay tuned here for Golf Night on TV Nation. Where's yours? Down the left side. Where's mine? Still on the tee. Ooh, good one. Made it down to the women's tees. Step up there and give it a whack for me. Whoa! It's gonna be a good show. <laughs> with Michael Moore. Tonight, Michael Moore joins American corporations in the trend towards downsizing and temping. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. Ben Hamper takes a look at a growing phenomenon in the American workplace, sabotage on the job. He was the general manager of the hotel. I got into his car and drove it down, and I pulled it in to back it up and park it, and I just thought, all right, screw it, and I just backed it up as fast as I could and smashed it into a wall. Roy Seekoff finds out, will the American public respond to any old junk mail? We are the friends of Jeffrey Dahmer. The friends of Jeffrey Dahmer will probably have a very negative effect on most of the population of the United States. Michael Moore returns to the land where caning began, Great Britain. Naughty, 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 oh, naughty, so naughty, great. naughty boy. And Mike gets more tips on how to improve TV Nation. Anything I can do about those Olsen twins over on ABC? I don't think so. Let's say it's a dark night, you're walking down an empty street, suddenly you spot a network executive walking toward you. Which club do you use? I'd probably use a pitching wedge. Pitching wedge, this one right here? Yeah, that one. Uh -huh. Because why? Well, it's a little heavier, and it's got just a little bit more loft to it. Good choice. We'll be right back, right after this. Ready? I think so. Snackwell's chocolate sandwich cookies. A delicious way to cut the fat. Unbelievable. What if I can't pick enough of these? Those women will be after me again. Relax. Go home. Ah! Hello, Cookie Man. What's in the box? What a delicious way to cut the fat. Snackwell's chocolate sandwich cookies. So good. Can we ever make enough? Thank you, precious. Nabisco. Reason number one, to rush to McDonald's. The Big Mac Extra Value Meal. A hot, mouth-watering Big Mac. Large, crispy golden fries. An icy Coke, all just $2.99. $2.99. Stay tuned for more reasons to choose McDonald's. I expect her to sweat if she's running a marathon, but not when we're close to each other. You just can't get close to a guy if he smells. Get a little closer with Arid, the anti-odor antiperspirant that helps keep you extra, extra dry. I trust Arid.
this fall, two lawyers will come together. You stick to what I'm telling you. Who are you to put your point of view above your clients, God? To help the people who cannot help themselves. You are willing to let that innocent boy go to prison for the rest of his life? Because justice isn't just for the rich. Let me know when you're ready to play on the winning side. What makes you think I'm not on the winning side right now? Justice is for all. Melissa Gilbert and Cicely Tyson in a landmark new drama, Sweet Justice, Saturdays this fall on NBC. You know, I really need some advice with this here. What do you think? I think you have it gripped way too tight. I think you need to loosen that grip. Yeah. Up. You know where I learned that? My dad. <laughs> dad, come here. This is my dad, Frank Moore. Frank. Hi, Roger. Roger, our TV Nation golf pro. He says I'm gripping it too tight. Well, Roger's probably right. Yeah, well, thanks. So, you know, if you were going to use this as a cane, actually, it would make a good cane, wouldn't it? Huh? The grip would be pretty good then, right? Absolutely. Well, I just got back from Great Britain where caning began, and I went to explore that subject. I want you guys to take a look at this while I cane this ball. Ah, England. This other Eden, this sceptered isle, this precious stone set in the silver sea, this blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this, this England? This is a little traveling item here for those who want a discreet small cane. Mr. Hussey, Mr. Spencer, we're going to bend you over and bash you both severely. One of Britain's greatest gifts to the world has been the fine art of caning. This one is much more your big, whoppy brute. And that would be quite painful, that one. Since the caning of Michael Fay in Singapore, the American public seems to think that caning began in the third world. <laughs> Not so. I went to Britain, the birthplace of caning, to find out why the Brits are so in love with spanking each other's bottoms. Hard or soft? That is a bull's pistol. Very painful indeed. I... Di Llewellyn is the owner of the Bogner Cane Company, sort of one of the I... largest manufacturers of punishment canes. Since the uh, caning of this American youth in Singapore, opinion polls have showed an overwhelming support for the use of caning as punishment. Why do you think that is? I think they're probably realizing something that we realized a long time ago. We built an empire on it after all. The British Empire was the largest empire that was ever built in the history of mankind. And most of it was achieved with these fine whoppy canes, right? They say it was on the playing fields of Eton, but it was also in various dreaded rooms where boys would be bent over and have their bottoms given six of the best. It taught them not to be naughty, toughened them up, and made them good frontiersmen. What was the empire? The British Empire was one third of the world's surface. And now what? Now what? Well, basically, we've got Gibraltar sitting in there very nicely. Mm -hmm. There's a Falkland Island. Okay, so we got essentially two islands and a rock. Yes, right? that sort of thing. And then this island that we're sitting on now. Yep. And that's, that's about it. That's about it. And it's all because we gave up caning in schools mm -hmm. and started having base-blooded politicians who were, who were brought up without being savagely thrashed. Although caning was officially banned in state schools in 1987, a few private schools still use the cane. Rodney School in Nottinghamshire is one of the schools that still upholds the tradition. Headmistress for the last 50 years, Joan Thomas's disciplinary practices have been praised by military generals. She recently caned some 12-year-old girls for sneaking into the boys' dormitory. The next day they came and um, said, we brought you these, Miss Thomas. There were some, one of them had brought a plant or some small gift and, and some chocolates. And I said, but I came to you yesterday or the day before. Oh, this is yes, but we know we deserved it, and we're very sorry. We shouldn't have done it. Now, what kind of, what kind of pupil do you think I would have made here? You? Yeah, me. I think I could have coped with you, really. You think so? <laughs> I think huh? so. Actually, that would, this would be a good place for me. <laughs> <laughs> Member of Parliament Harry Greenway is a former schoolmaster and a skillful caner. Oh, that hurt. No, that hurt. He has been campaigning for corporal punishment to be restored in state schools. Look the end there. Ah. Harder still. That really hurt. If you knew you were going to be caned, I mean, I was caned uh, often enough as a, as a boy, 
Um, and in anticipation of it, you had to be rather courageous. You certainly wouldn't have wimped around like my, as Michael Frayne or his parents did, you know, and said, oh, please stop it, don't let me uh, have it. You know, you'd, you'd assume that it was justice and that you deserved it. You'd brace yourself to face it and you wouldn't whinge afterwards. In fact, many British men seem to have a wistful longing for the good old days of being whacked with a stick. A club called School Dinners allows them to relive those carefree times, complete with school grub, and sadistic schoolgirls. We've got 14 boys to cane. This is an awful lot, and it's going to take a long time to get through them. All right, gentlemen, what do you want this to be? Hard or soft? <laughs> Coming out loud. And oh, what? It really makes you wonder were the Brits always this weird, or is it just since they lost their empire? Because of the lack of discipline, yes. because a generation grew up not to understand how to uh, deal with adverse conditions, such Very as true. being caned in the buttocks. Yes. On the buttocks, not in the buttocks. I love the way, I love the way you pronounce buttocks. <laughs> buttocks. Um, well, how do you say it over here? Buttocks. Buttocks? I'll yeah. say it your way. Buttocks. Just for today. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> well, I'd try to um, uh, teach you something that uh, when you became 16 or 18 that you could go out into the world and earn your living. You mm -hmm. seem to be doing very well for yourself now, so I don't think there's any worry about that. Surprisingly, isn't so, it? <laughs> so, it is quite amazing the sort of people who get good jobs, isn't it? I wonder what it is. Is it personality or...? I don't know. <laughs> we brought a dummy. Oh, have you? I thought you set uh, me up, have you? I didn't want well, you to cane me, well, so... No. <laughs> All right. Well, I think you... I mean, yeah, no, I mean, he'd need to touch his toe. And, yeah, and, bend him over, sort of. And, and he wouldn't want a coat on, or if he has a coat, that would have to be turned up. Mm-hmm. All sorts of things from that. But... Wow. All right. That hurt just hearing it. I gotta say, though, why bother with this, this cane business here? I mean, why not just give him a good punch in the nose? I mean, why not, why not take a gun, shoot them in the foot, and, and say, you know, that'll teach you. I mean, you, they'll, they'll remember that for months to come. A lot longer than they'll remember being hit in the buttocks. Yes, with, I, I regret to say then that then you really don't understand what we mean by using the cane. You obviously, it is in your brain, it is, and probably in many other Americans' brains, it is synonymous with brutalization of any form, right? Well, it'd be it's punishing someone in the foot. Punishment. No, no, whacking someone in the <clears throat> jaw is like immediate retribution. You have pinched my girlfriend, boom, right? It's the law of the jungle. Right. I do believe the cane is quite a sophisticated beast. It is more civilized because you can actually measure it. You can say, right, six strokes on the buttocks, gone, forgotten, doesn't cost the taxpayer loads of money to go and keep the guy in jail year after year after year. Who were you so, thinking of when you... <laughs> I was thinking of a naughty boy. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and don't do it again. Mm-hmm. Because you don't want to tease a boy, you know, if he's, if, if he's going to be punished, mm -hmm. you don't want him to be, have to be punished every few days. Right. You know, you, you want it to be one and all, mm -hmm. once for all. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that would have, he'd have felt that, wouldn't he? Say it again. Uh -huh. I love it. You love that, don't you? Yes, I'm going to say it for you. Okay. Buttocks. Buttocks. <laughs> I'll just say it again for you in English. <laughs> <laughs> say it again. <laughs> Buttocks. <laughs> What do you think the main problem would have been? With you? Yes. I would teach you to walk properly. All right, do I walk improperly? Yes, you do. You've got your feet at 10 to 2 instead of <laughs> straight forward. Now, what does 10 to 2 mean? Well, like this. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> Look at this, I'm already walking straighter. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Just, a, just this little walk with you. <laughs> naughty, 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 oh, naughty, so naughty, great. naughty boy. How do you say the word buttocks? Buttocks. Buttocks. <laughs> buttocks. <laughs> buttocks. <laughs> buttocks. <laughs> buttocks. I got it. Okay, wait on this foot. Forward here. Right. Back like this. A flick in the wrist just there. Right. To give you the speed. So then up, down, and to target. So I'll try that once more with it. Right, here we go. Flick of the wrist, right? Okay, flick of the here. wrist up, yeah, yes. And done. Well done. Bravo. No, not as good as yours. No, I think you could still make, you could right, still make a again. member of the British Empire yet. I have to say, we're going to have to get, oh, he's getting the taste for it, and also, 
it's a good thing it's safe as getting it summer spring clean. Can I cane you? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Huh? I'm sorry, it's off the menu. Are you today. sure? Yes, sorry about that. Oh, now look, you've made you know him what? cry. Well, it's, it has hurt me more than it hurt you, but anyway, just don't do it again. I don't want to see you in this office of mine. If you do, you know what it would be, and you would not like it, would you? Okay, Mr. Headmaster. Okay. I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. All right. Off Bye. you go. Jai, good. Go on. I'm off to choir and then to cricket. Hey, come on, let me cane you. Just no. I'll, I'll be soft. No. I think I was getting the hang of it, and soon I would be back in America with my newfound cane. And now, the official TV Nation poll. 229 Americans were surveyed by the professional polling firm of Widgerine Associates. 88% of Bush voters have no idea what rappers are talking about. Coming up, TV Nation talks with American workers getting back at their bosses. Don't be giving me any lip. And I'll tell you something for your own good. If sales don't pick up, there's going to be some faces missing around here. You can always tell who's in J.C. Penney's Hunt Club by their special handshakes, daily rituals, and secret passwords. You see, people in J.C. Penney's Hunt Club adhere to a casual, classic dress code, wear unique insignias, and proclaim value as a motto. So, if you want to get into Hunt Club, well, you'll need to stop by our headquarters and uh, learn our club song. J.C. Penney, doing it right. <laughs> Well, are you going to have some? As if I had a choice. Look, let's just assume for a moment that by some candy-coated miracle, one could resist the cosmic spectrum huh? of colors. There is still the primal urge for milk chocolate. So true. The kind that tugs at your soul, melting your willpower bit by bit, little M by little M. Oh, wow. And you ask me if I'm going to have some? It was just a question. <laughs> you and your questions. When are you going to stop asking so many questions? Sorry. Well, it's just you ask too many questions. I'm friendly. We ask people who use an all-purpose bleach cleaner, what do you use for tough soap scum? For that, my bathroom cleaner works better. What about grease? Usually a grease cutter. If your all-purpose bleach cleaner so all-purpose, what's with all those others? Good question. Introducing the one that's better. New Comet Cleaner with bleach. Comet cleans tough kitchen dirt, bathroom soap scum, and greasy stove tops better than the leading all-purpose bleach cleaner. Now that's a great cleaner. New Comet Cleaner with bleach. When others can't cut it, Comet can. So I met this girl. I asked her to dinner in a movie. She asked, what do you have in mind? So I said, Make it a blockbuster night and a border night too. Go to Taco Bell, buy tacos or burritos and a medium drink. Get a free blockbuster video. Two for one rental and Taco Bell food. Make it a blockbuster night and a border night too. Hurry and get a coupon for a two for one blockbuster video rental when you buy food and a medium drink at Taco Bell. Personalities are better than two. If you wanna watch Frasier, get a kick out of life. Remember now, he's on Tuesday night. Never remember this person on point of view. Everyone around him is a little poo poo. If you're gonna laugh with all of your might, it's NBC's new Tuesday night. This boy! Roger, come here. You're a golf pro, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, this is very frustrating. You've just taken way too much sand. Yeah. Do you, do you, how do you, I mean, how do you take out your frustrations here on the job? I come out and hit a few range balls once in a while and uh, try not to take it home with me. You mean the range balls? No, the range balls I don't take home. Uh, Frustrations yeah. I don't take home either. Yeah. Well, a lot of people on the job, very frustrated, they take it out on the job. Our correspondent, Ben Hamper, went to meet some of these people, and I'd like you to take a look at this right now. Well, for once your machine set up right, how'd it happen? Somebody do it for you? Oh, I set it up. Listen, don't be giving me any lip. And I'll tell you something for your own good. If sales don't pick up, there's going to be some faces missing around here. They say work is the only place where a guy can yell at you, and all you can do when he's finished is say, thank you. Well, that's what you're supposed to do. 
In my 12 years working on the GM assembly line in Flint, Michigan, workers found their own ways of saying thanks to the boss. The line would mysteriously shut down. Sometimes beer cans found their way into the truck chassis. Plenty of people did it, but it's not exactly the kind of thing they brag about on primetime TV. That is, not until I met former mail clerk Martin Sprouse. We have a computer programmer, a demolition worker, a roofer. I found people that work in offices, air freight technicians, men and women, people in Florida, people in Maine. Anyone I talked to had a story. Martin collected 136 of their stories in a book. This is not your traditional take on sabotage. Most management people and people that have written about the subject of workplace sabotage before have always said it's one type of troublemaker, it's one type of dissatisfied person, someone that's going through a bad marriage, alcoholic. But what I found is that you can't really pinpoint it on one certain type of person. For instance, you might think an aspiring young painter who works for a mural company pretty much has it made. Well, Martin introduced us to Harvey. He says it's not all that cushy. We did a contract for, for Disney, and um, that was a, that had extremely stiff guidelines. We constantly had someone over our shoulder, you know, telling us to, to, to change things. You can't have that. That's inappropriate. These people's faces, um, that guy's brow is furrowed. It looks like he's not happy, you know? You've got to make him look happy. Everybody has to be happy. The flowers have to be bright. You know, it's like sunshine everywhere. So how did Harvey get back at an employer who just wanted him to be happy? He decided to add his own little message to the painting. It was kind of a hotel-type scene, you know, crowded in the front with these people, and in the background I painted, uh, I painted some Nazis walking around on a balcony, you know, and very small, but, uh, but surveying the crowd. My bosses said, who's this guy on the ledge back here? And I said, well, they said, he looks like a soldier. And I said, well, actually, he's a security guard. You know, I mean, we've all been to Disneyland, and we know that they're always watching you with video cameras, so, you know, he's just a security guard. But, you know, this guy had, this guy had on the, you know, the, the uniform, he had grenades hanging from his belt and, and, and bayonets, and... Uh, the security guard explanation seemed to just kind of get it right on through, and uh, it's it's installed now in one of the Disney complexes. I don't really so, want to say where. <laughs> I was going to ask you, uh, would you care to divulge where that might be? Well, I'd really rather not share it with you, because <laughs> I'd like it to stay there. Harvey hopes his sabotage is for the ages. Other workers are more impulsive and less subtle. Sean was a parking valet at a swanky hotel in Beverly Hills. His act of sabotage was the kind no boss could overlook. Uh, I was working at a hotel in Los Angeles, a nice hotel on Sunset Boulevard. And this, uh, he was a general manager of the hotel. And uh, over a course of like two years working there, he. Uh, we saw him do lots of disgusting things, like fire a lot of people at one time, and then take six weeks vacation. And uh, as valets, we despised him. So he pulled in one morning at 6.30, and I was the only valet on. The, the doorman wasn't there yet, so I got into his car and drove it down. And I pulled it in to back it up and park it, and I just thought, oh, screw it. And I just backed it up as fast as I could and smashed it into a wall backwards. And, you know, I'd go forward and scrape one side and turn the wheel a little bit and scrape the other side and just kept on going back and forth. So can we assume that this was your last day on the job or did you hang on to your job any longer? No, that was it. That was it? That was it. I even got, you know, I got my sick pay and nothing really, you know, he wasn't able to do anything. It was good. People have a lot of different motivations behind what they do. There's not just one reason. It's not just one type of person. So. The definition we came up with, uh, with is anything you do at work that you're not supposed to do. Short of handcuffing you to your desk or treating you like a human being, what's a suspicious boss to do? Fear of sabotage has spawned a lucrative industry. Training videos like this one try to convince you that sabotage is just plain wrong. Come on, Dina, pack it up. It's just 10 till. Come on, what's a few minutes anyway? It doesn't take much for a boss to be able to accuse you of sabotage, but some acts of sabotage the boss never even notices. Meet Linda. I was a receptionist at a doctor's office. 
he wasn't very nice to the employees. So I just decided that I was just going to start taking paper from him. How much did you end up taking? <laughs> Maybe about a ream. I don't think so that's a lot. Did this make you feel better? Yes, actually it did. I think the doctor deserved it. Um, I think that it was a perk of the job. I'm not sure if it was, it was a learning experience for him, um, but I felt better. Does sabotage usually work? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not like after using sabotage, everyone in the book got a pay raise and, you know, started living large, you know. But it's, you know, most of the people, even if it was a minor thing, say it just broke up the boredom for one day or they slowed down the work process, they gained more control, the, you know, the boss is telling them to work faster and they slowed down just so they could get a better grip on things. You know, I think that's very effective. Most saboteurs are trying to make their jobs a little better. But some believe they can make the whole world a little better. Reggie was a mail clerk at a Washington, D.C. think tank. It took him a while to figure out just what kind of thinking went on there. I just sort of found that on my own after reading the pamphlets that I was stuffing the envelopes with. I, I read a few, and the more I read, the more I came to realize what their policies were. Reggie's new employer was the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank whose founder liked to brag that he was to the right of Genghis Khan. Well, I just sort of started thinking of ways to get back at them, just sort of, I don't know, sort of screw them up, I suppose. But when it came to my turn to file and sort the mail, I would just sort of pick the more obvious envelopes and open them up, see how much they were for, and, and uh, put them in the shredder. Throw them in the trash outside work, take them home, throw them away there. And funding to a nonprofit organization is key, so if they lose out on a few thousand dollars, I think that makes for a bit of a problem. It would give you some sort of sense of personal satisfaction that I was destroying these checks that were meant for the, the heritage. So what can be done to solve the problem of sabotage? For me, I don't see it as a problem. I see it as a very important tactic that people use to solve really horrible situations or just day-to-day -day boredom. And, you know, it seems like kind of a subconscious thing, but most Americans do it no matter what because they don't like being pushed around, especially at work by their bosses. Won't you dumb clucks ever learn? Remember what I said. You know, sabotage is as common as work itself in America. Seems like anyone has a story that has worked a job. Coming up, TV Nation finds out which junk mail Americans will respond to. Well, what do you make of the fact that a regular guy gets less money than a, than a swindler and a cannibal? We weren't sending these to kooks, were we? No, absolutely not to kooks. Introducing the most durable bounty ever. It does jobs I never thought a paper towel could do. Now it's the quilted picker-upper. The quilted quaker picker-upper. It even scrubs the carpet. Ordinary towels fall apart, even top quality towels, but new quilted bounties this much stronger. It's still quicker, too. The quilted quaker picker-upper. New quilted bounty. bounty. Grandma's sweet butter, fresh from the churn. It tasted so good. Like fresh churn sweet butter, country crock churn style. The taste of sweet butter from the farm. Maytag repairmen own the finest tools. And sometimes, they even get to use them. Maytag, the dependability people. It's an NBC triple feature weekend. Chris Scott. First on Friday at a special time, Arnold Schwarzenegger is... Stop it! The Kindergarten Cup. Then on Saturday... <laughs> Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future 3. And Sunday, it's those brave boys in blue. Police Academy 6, an NBC triple feature weekend. Coming to a television near you. Put Velveeta in, leave the lookalikes out. Mix the salsa in, pop it in and pull it out. Use some lookalike, who knows what may come out. With Velveeta, there's no doubt. Put Velveeta in, leave the lookalikes out. Mix the salsa in, pop it in and pull it out. Now you got a tasty salsa dip that's really gonna make them shout. Velveeta! Velveeta cooks better! That's what it's all about. 
baked bread, piled with extra lean juicy ham, oven roasted turkey breast, topped with a classic taste of... Pardon me, would you have any gray poupon? But of course. Introducing Subway's new turkey and ham Dijon. Turkey, ham, and the great taste of gray poupon mustard. Now for a limited time on your choice of rolls. At Subway, the place where fresh is the taste. A brand new AP football poll. We'll show it to you at 10 o'clock. Welcome back to TV Nation. I'm here with our golf pro, Roger Jabara. Roger, I need another tip. Well, I'd like to see you make a little bit more aggressive swing, if you could. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, I need a tip about junk mail. Tip about junk mail. I'd get some, but uh, the tip that I'd give you is to throw it out. Throw it out, yeah. Except, you know, a lot of people don't throw it out. They actually respond to it. They send money to all kinds of organizations. You'd be surprised. We sent our correspondent, Roy Seekoff, out to investigate this. Check, check it out. I'll tee off. First, let me welcome you to the world of direct mail. And basically, it's roughly divided into outgoing and incoming. This is called an insert machine. This is, this is an insert machine? Yeah. It's a profession to know how to do this. You couldn't just, I couldn't just start sorting. No, you couldn't just start sorting. No, you have to know how to do it. This is a forklift. Right. Okay. What is direct mail? Okay. Why would I want to use it? And how would I best use it? Okay. Direct mail, by definition, it reaches the customer directly from the person. This is called hand fulfillment or sometimes hand job. It simply means that these ha we have to insert into the envelope materials that cannot be done by machine. Is this for airmail? No, this is not for airmail. This is just to entertain the workers here. When I'm writing my letters, the details, do they have to be true? They absolutely have to be true. Obviously, you may walk into an area called mail fraud. Consequences of mail fraud. Jail. Am I going too much in detail? Let me know, you're fine. So far, direct mail sounded pretty good. But I decided to really put it to the test by asking David to create fundraising campaigns for three dubious characters. Savings and loan swindler Charles Keating, serial killer and cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer, and me, Roy Seekoff. We started with Keating. The target market that I would recommend to this type of campaign is obviously upper income people immediately. Because anybody poor who's been swingled, etc., you're not going to get any response. We want platinum card people. We want people with Neiman Marcus credit cards. That is very possible again, because they may feel that he has done business legally and again may have received a bad rap, especially if we're appearing to the conservative market who believe in the 100% free enterprise, get government off your back regulations. Very good. Okay, now we continue on our path along the fringe. Dahmer was next. I offered a possible approach. Let us be blunt. If you think that the government is entitled to strictly limit your diet to only fish, fowl, beef, pork, grains, dairy, fruits, vegetables, and legumes, then throw this letter away right now. But if you think that man is entitled to sample the culinary pleasures of all of God's creatures, including the flesh of his fellow man, please read on. Not bad. <laughs> okay, okay. We're looking, we're looking for, we are the friends of Jeffrey Dahmer. The friends of Jeffrey Dahmer will probably have a very negative effect on most of the population of the United States. Let me think for one second. Hmm. Friends of Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer, what was the verdict? Was he guilty but insane? No, guilty, 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 guilty. No insanity. Guilty. 
Okay, then that's the approach. We have an insane man that is not responsible for his actions. And we should approach it in, in the sense that he was convicted in spite of being insane. We can't be that cruel of a society as not to be sympathetic to these type of causes. Very good. So, okay. you know, in general, putting aside our committees for a minute, this is a, this is a pretty good way to make some money, to raise some money. Direct mail in general, yes. It's kind of got the wheels turning here. You know, and I'm thinking, what about me? Okay. I, you know, um, I make a decent living. Okay. But, you know, I always seem to be scrambling for a little extra money. Okay. A little extra pocket change. Okay. So I'm wondering, could we draft a letter to help me? Absolutely, yes. Right. Absolutely, yes. David suggested we include my wife, Tammy, in our appeal. Dear friend of the American dream, you've probably never heard of Roy Seacoff, and that is why we're writing to you today. Roy recently celebrated his first wedding anniversary with his beautiful wife, Tammy. Like the rest of us, they seek the American dream, but for Roy and Tammy, what so many of us already have is just impossible. Please take a moment to make a pledge for any amount. Dear fellow friend of civil liberties, are you shocked by our letterhead? Are you asking yourself, why would anyone be a friend of Jeffrey Dahmer? It's a good question. The answer is simple. If Jeffrey Dahmer cannot be declared insane, what chance do the rest of us have should we be unfortunate enough to break the law while suffering from an emotional disorder? We need your help. Dear friend of free enterprise, you're not truly surprised that Charles Keating has friends, are you? We are a group of concerned business people who believe that Charles Keating's only crime was an unfortunate combination of bad choices and bad luck. Please, make that pledge today for any amount. Campaign set, it was time to put David's work on the line. We mailed out over 12,000 letters to a cross-section of U.S. citizens. Three weeks later, the results were in. So I got less money than Jeffrey Dahmer or Charles Keating? People obviously care about you less than they care about Jeffrey Dahmer or Charles Keating. I'd hate to disappoint you. That is the fact. Even though we only asked for pledges, all three campaigns received cash donations. Had we sent letters to every household in America, our test results indicate that Jeffrey Dahmer would have received $1,205,000, Charles Keating $868,000, and me? Well, let's just say I came in third. Are you surprised that Jeffrey Dahmer, perhaps the most notorious of our campaigns, got the most? No. People took the time to really write. I mean, we see uh, here with Keaton, donate to a crook, never. You deserve what you got, you crook. You can kiss my blah, blah, blah. I can understand Keating getting negative letters. I can understand Dahmer getting negative letters. But I and my wife got tons of negative responses. I mean, people really got on. I mean, the American way is to do it on your own, not by begging. This one says, you're no better than the scum in the street. Get a life. Here's when they took a full page letter. You don't appear to be very intelligent. But we weren't sending these to kooks, were we? No, absolutely not to kooks. Well, what do you make of the fact that a regular guy gets less money than a, than a swindler and a cannibal? It actually has a more rational explanation than you would expect. Jeffrey Dahmer is a celebrity. His name draws attention, positive and negative, but celebrity is a celebrity, regardless. So you're saying that I would have been better off as if I was a convicted felon? You would have been better off as a famous convicted felon. What does that say? I think it is an indication of what a celebrity name would do. And it's also the ease of which people, we manage to move people away from the horror of his crime into a neutral issue, which may have nothing to do with Jeffrey Dahmer. Hmm, so that's the secret. Moving people away from what you really are and into something they can feel good about. So good, in fact, that Americans contribute over $50 billion each year to direct mail entrepreneurs like Ross Perot, Jesse Helms, and Oliver North. It just goes to show, people will send money to anyone. Well, just about. And now, golf pro Roger Jabara on politics. All your weight on your left side, no weight on your right side. That's another helpful tip from TV Nation golf pro Roger Jabara. TV Nation, sponsored in part by Dawn Dishwashing Liquid. Dawn takes grease out of your way. Lately, I only buy perfume-free or color-free. My husband wants perfume-free clothes. My daughter, the purist, wants color-free stuff. Mom! Sorry! How about what I want? A free dishwashing liquid. Introducing Dawn Free. She always gets what she wants. 
With no colors or perfumes, New Dawn Free breaks up grease better than other leading liquids. I want grease free too. Of course she does. New Dawn Free takes colors, perfumes, and grease out of your way. It's hard for kids to understand that you don't have all day to fix dinner. I'm starving. But that doesn't mean you can't whip up a meal that seems like you had all day. Thanks, <laughs> Mom. Very funny. Beef. It's what's for dinner. We took the scent of country wildflowers and brought it to light. Introducing Glade Plug-Ins Nightlight in a new design and fresh new scent. Plug it in. 45 days of freshness, new country wildflowers fragrance. Soft and gentle, light country wildflowers, freshness day and night. Plug it in, plug it in. Plug in's nightlight, fresh from Glade SC Johnson Wax. You can always tell who's in J.C. Penney's Hunt Club by their special handshakes, daily rituals, and secret passwords. You see, People in J.C. Penney's Hunt Club adhere to a casual, classic dress code, wear unique insignias, and proclaim value as a motto. So, if you want to get into Hunt Club, well, you'll need to stop by our headquarters and uh, learn our club song. J.C. Penney, doing it right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gene Wilder. I have this new series on NBC this fall. Ready or not, here we go. And it would be scrumptious if you'd watch me play this man who gets married very late in life and suddenly has twins and he wants to play with them all the time hide and seek gene where are you sam is the target again and it's your turn to clean the bathroom floor saturday nights are getting wilder something wilder comes to nbc this fall act casual say nothing push it up and down slowly and then it'll clean it right up for you wow look at that you know, she'd have one of these in the bathroom. Absolutely. You know, instead of the shower. Because you'd need somebody in there doing that, right? You get a lot of corporate chairmen coming here to play golf? We get a lot. Do you? Yeah. We get a lot of them. Do you ever hear them while they're out here talking about downsizing or... I have heard that. Bringing in temps or... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, we at TV Nation have had to consider this lately. So, back in New York, I shot this little story. I want you to take a look. Hey guys, uh, great job. Kent, Willis, Adrian, Donna, Steve, Helen. Been doing great work here, really, really appreciate it. This is the part of the staff here at TV Nation, and these are the offices of TV Nation. And Unfortunately, this is our last show. Uh, we were only signed up to do a summer series, and we'd like to come back on the air. We hope NBC brings us back, but I started thinking, well, what could I do to convince the network? You know, to put us back on the air, and, I, and, and then I thought, well, you know, the way to do that is to reduce costs so I can help increase their profits. And, of course, the best way to reduce costs is to get rid of some of the people. But, of course, it would be a very difficult thing for me to do. And then I found out there are people who can do it for me. Meet one of those people, William Stoddard. He's a re-engineering specialist at Anderson Consulting. His job is to cut the fat. Okay, you ready for the ride? Ready. And to make a company lean and mean. Let's say you lay off 10 people. Okay. Okay. What's to say they aren't going to go get better jobs than they have now? That's my point. And be happier than they are. They probably would be. You have a lot of computers out there. It's the essence of re-engineering is to understand how you could leverage technology, make it easier to do by fewer people. I showed him a list of my staff so we could start the cutting. Mm -hmm. Now, we only do five segments per show. Mm -hmm. We've got 15 segment producers. I mean, this is one area, personally, I would call fat, right here. Could be. Okay, this is it. How many weeks does it take you to edit one piece? Week to two weeks. A week to two weeks? Bill, Bill. This, this was a good example, all right? Like he said, it takes a week to two weeks to edit a piece. It's got to have a piece edited in a week. The show's on every week. The show's not on every week to two weeks. It's mm -hmm. on every week. Every week. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. He's the money guy. All right. 
So he yeah, stays. Don't touch him. No. Last year, Stoddard's company earned about $800 million for re-engineering all sorts of companies. I wonder how many people he'd actually let go. Mm -hmm. You can't even give me any idea in terms of the companies you've consulted with? No, I don't. How many we, jobs we have been cut? We don't keep track of that. No? No, we don't. Uh, don't even keep track? <laughs> That's a little cold-blooded, even for the TV business. I don't have the stomach for chopping heads. I mean, I had only 50 lives to worry about. Look at all these layoffs from these other companies. I want to speak to somebody a little less ruthless. John O'Neill is an executive coach who helps business leaders like me cope with all the stress of laying people off. If I could, if I could see this in more of a positive way, yeah, that I was helping them get on with their lives, mm -hmm. or as yeah. opposed to just um, hacking their heads off and yeah, throwing maybe them on you the help, street. maybe you you can be helpful to them. Maybe you say, look, I'll I'll let's I'll put a reference together. I'll yeah. maybe I even have some contact. And I agree that's the way they should look at it. But I look around the office and people look like they've really settled in for a long time. I mean, you know, they've 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 nailed things into the walls. I mean yeah. they're doing that to influence your thinking. How many how many folks are you talking about? Mm, you know, most of them. Look, some of us have to leave the show. No. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. Hey. Hey. No, I mean you. That's it. You're fired. Oh. Um. I've never done this. It's not going to be easy. Corporate consultant Carola Schmeda founded his LaSalle Street Management Theater Company to put on little skits to show executives the right and wrong way to give employees the ads. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Good. Uh, Peter, this is uh, Marlene Charnowski from Human Resources. Mr. Naughton. Oh, this is rather ominous. Peter, please take a seat. This is the right way. <clears throat> really isn't good news, is it? It's about downsizing. We don't like to use the word firing. Uh, we are not in a position to... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's me. You don't have to be so formal. Yes, I do. Your position has been eliminated. Effective today. Do you have any keys that belong to your work area? Of course. May I have them, please? Using that sketch as an example, one bank in Chicago fired 400 people all in one day. How many more questions, for God's sake? They wanted all of the people let go on the same day, so there were no surprises, no leaks, nothing. It, it's just like any, you know, it's like D-Day. You don't want people to know what your plans are in advance because it can spoil all kinds of things. Oh my God. I am being stripped. Maybe if I had some justification, I mean, I already suspected one of my expensive producers was up to something. If I could just get some evidence on her, so I hired a private investigator to help me, Richard Bo Deedle. So are you what some people would call a private dick? Well, private eye, a professional investigator sounds better than private dick. Yeah, well, some guys would say that. Well, all right. You're suspecting that she's contacting another corporation? Uh, probably other other networks, other magazine shows. And telling them about what you're doing? Stories that we're doing is the possibility. Or she could be the post-it note uh, thief. Either one would be grounds. Mm. You're not allowed to lift anything from the office. Yeah. Whether it's an idea or a post-it note. Yeah, but you mean just with a post-it note, you would fire someone from taking post-it notes? Well, I'm talking about cases of post-it notes. What would you do with cases of post-it notes? I have no idea. Bo had a great idea for digging up some dirt on my suspect. Stop here, you want to stop closer or what? Steal her garbage. At least I had someone who wasn't afraid to do the dirty work. Up the trunk. Come on, on the left. On the left, on the left. Up the trunk. It says trunk. Look it, right there, trunk. We see she eats macaroni and cheese. She threw away canceled checks. We actually have her bank account statements here. Wait a second, something doesn't make sense here. <laughs> she drinks a whole bottle of wine. She takes slim fast after drinking a whole bottle of wine. Wait a second. What's this? This is that cremation for, uh, for uh, what do you call that thing, to fomitate the uh, vaginalization here. Is that what that is? You were using words I've never heard, Bo. <laughs> that's a, that's, and so that's why she doesn't use the condom, 
is because she used fomentation here. But that's that's not enough. You have to use condom and a gel. What's this? Uh huh. Uh, Unless she smokes her own cigarettes, uh, she must uh, be smoking something else. Uh, uh, wow, this is more than I wanted to know. Can we find out anything about her with uh, now that we have her credit card number? Yeah, we can. Well, it's illegal without her permission to run any kind of a credit check. Yeah, but a few years ago, the management at Sheridan Hotels installed hidden cameras to keep an eye on their employees. Bo told me we could do the same thing, so I had him install a hidden camera right at the computer station. Bo took care of everything. It's in that dot. I don't see it. That's the idea. It's a pin-eye lens camera. Uh -huh. See, no one's supposed to know it's there except us. They don't know that we're going to be able to watch them mm -hmm. day and night. See me? Now move to your left a little. Okay. Now down a little. Now down. Down toward us. Forward. Go forward. No, no, no. Yeah. Now, down on all fours and bark like a dog. So I'd be prepared for the inevitable transition if these surveillance cameras work. I brought in a temp manager, Farrell Friedland. Temps are the new corporate wave. Manpower Inc. just surpassed General Motors as the largest employer in the U.S. Is there severance pay? No. How about sick pay? Sick no. days? Bereavement days? No. Um unless they wanted to use their vacation. You would find highly skilled, overqualified people. For Most us. of the time. Really? College degrees? Some of them, yeah. For 400 a week. This is the everything department, actually. Everything. You name it, they do it. Like office manager. Payroll, yeah. 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 People that can do that? Absolutely. How about researchers? Yes, that we have. You can get researchers for yes. them? Yes. Uh -huh. Bottom end, low, low end, how much per hour? Probably 11, 12. Eleven, twelve dollars an hour. Excellent. Very good. Very good. I have some people here. I'm just wondering if possibly you, your agency could find temps for okay. these jobs. Okay. Okay. How about this person? Absolutely. Yeah. No problem. That one. Perfect. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Okay. You can temp him. Also easy. No problem. No problem. Good. Good. That we can actually temp all of NBC. From Bob Wright to Warren Littlefield, all the way down all the way to down this show. To the people at the doors? Yeah. Temp them all. Temp them all. Do you have writers? Yes. Oh, you do have writers? Yes. How much? People would probably take it for nothing to get into network writing. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? They'd probably raise their hand and say, I'll intern. That's incredible. Yeah. 100, years ago, they, they, 100 years ago, they called that slavery. Now it's, now all, it's interning. Now it's interning. Now it's interning. As they say in the corporate world, it it's a win-win situation. I can fire all of them and then rehire them as temps. No benefits, of course. And thanks to Bo, I'll be able to keep an eye on them. But if nothing this here, July. I'm sorry to say, I didn't have it in me to let the staff go. I mean, after all we've been through, putting this show together, keeping it on the air, I just couldn't do it. And in a few minutes, the summer season is over for us. I guess we'll just have to sink or swim together. Fourteen percent of Americans surveyed agreed that Puerto Rico should not be the 51st state because that extra star would make the flag look bad. So you claimed 84,000 in entertainment expenses? Yes, I did. Do you have any receipts to back this up? No, I don't. Well, what's in the bag then? Tostitos chips and salsa. People really love them. And every time I open the bag, I mean one thing. Tostitos tortilla chips are so deliciously perfect with Tostitos salsa. Next thing you know, it's a party. I smell refund. Really? No, not really. <laughs> Tostitos, prepare to party. Pardon me. Wow, that's some breath. Oh, I agree. I've enjoyed your breath ever since 96th Street. Thank you very much. Want the ultimate fresh breath? Try Breath Savers mm. with its cool minty core. <sighs> breath Savers.
Reason number two, to run to McDonald's, the cheeseburger extra value meal. Hot, tempting, juicy cheeseburgers, large, crispy, golden fries, and icy Coke, all just $2.99. $2.99. Keep listening for more reasons to choose McDonald's. You've got your ranch dressing and your Italian. Ranch Italian. Hey, looking for a solution to that rut you're in? Then try Kraft Catalina dressing. It's spicy and sweet. A tasty creation that's anything but ordinary. Mm. So even if you're a rancher <laughs> or an Italian, you'll love the change to the spicy sweet taste of Catalina. She was fired for giving students books their parents say they should never have seen. Books on the occult don't belong at school. Modern Day Witch Hunt, Polly, Phillips, Dateline, tonight. Two men confess to the same murder. Which one is the real killer? We got us a real who done it. Jason Bateman, James Wilder, Two Faces of Evil, NBC Sunday. Well, that's our show for tonight, and, and this is the last show of our summer series, and I, I want to thank the thousands of people who have written us or called us. Uh, it's, it's been a great uh, seven weeks here, and, and uh, Roger, I think this probably was our best show in large part because you are a golf pro. Thank you very much, Mike. Well, no, thank you for being here. And uh, now we're on the last hole of our last show. Uh, any final words of advice here? Keep your head still. It's a 40-foot putt, and it's going to break a little bit to the right. OK, so just stay still. Stay still. OK, thank you very much. I'll tell you what, how about a little bet? If I make this, NBC brings us back in a couple months, all right? Okay. If I don't make the putt, we go straight to cable. OK, perfect. All right, here we go. these credits to make this important announcement. Contrary to Michael Moore's bet, the network has not yet decided to renew TV Nation. The future of this program is resting in the balance, not to mention the fate of my family and my weekend home. This is Bruce Brown. <clears throat> I'm the voice of TV Nation. But Michael Moore won't listen to me. No. I told him not to challenge the chairman of GE to screw in that light bulb. We would have been picked up by now for sure. But every week he pushes it more. Meanwhile, what about my bills? Moore doesn't care, but there's still time. It's up to you folks at home to show your support. Where's that damned address? 